And we are back with some Mariners here on OATP 21. Last time we left off here on the first year player, Jeff, we did that. And we also offered the top guys their demands. We're just waiting for them to accept it because it literally just happened and we haven't simmed any. And I've got a couple notes here written down of things that I wanted to do uh, right off the bat in this first episode. The first one is going to the lineups. And uh, Daniel Vogelbach is hes more probably of a DH, to be honest. Uh, yeah, probably more of a DH. Definitely want to get him in that position. So because my manager is Scott Cervais, I can just go to uh, set game strategy and force him to play at DH. So he is now the force DH. Uh, generally when I do this, I also do like to set their position back to first base or whatever position they are, but to just keep them locked in at DH. So we have somebody else playing first base, which would probably end up being Patrick Wisdom in this situation. But... We could call up Evan White soon. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to do it right now, but we could call him up soon. Because right now, the only first baseman we've got on the roster is Patrick Wisdom. And he'd be fine there. He'd be a decent piece. He's going to strike out a bit. He's a decent bat. He's, he hasn't got any really run at all, and he's <laughs> and it's a really bad, but it's 32 plate appearances. But uh, still, really bad uh, uh, weighted runs created plus there. You don't want to see that. But we are going to give him some run here at first base. And uh, and if he doesn't work out, like, probably maybe once we get to like the end of June, maybe a couple weeks, uh, we get to like maybe two weeks, we'll see what happens. And then we'll probably call up Evan White and just uh, just have him play first base. Because he is, he is our first baseman of the future, Evan White here. They've already got him locked into a long-term deal uh, that's really cheap to start and then ends up being uh, towards the end there. Starts to kick in in the uh, double digits. But uh, he is hitting an intro play through uh, 51, 52 games, 51 starts, 238 plate appearances. So that is good to see for Mr. Evan White. And uh, another thing that I did want to do was also in AAA here, Eric Fila, who I have down in AAA, and we do eventually want to call up. I want to get him some time in left field just so I can... Because right now you can see he can only really play right decently well, and he's never going to be a center fielder, obviously, so we're just going to set his game strategy and force him to play some left field so he can get some run in left field. And uh, what am I doing here? So he can get some run in left field. He's going to be shifted over there. Fraley will probably end up being shifted over to right or center or something. Fraley's not going to get taken out of the lineup. He's better than anybody else they're going to throw in right field, so he'll probably just play and end up playing right. But, uh, yeah, that's not going to mess with anything. It's just going to make Freely get some time in left field so he can get that position rating up and uh, make him more versatile to when we want to eventually call him up. Uh, also, before we left off last time, we did claim Mikey Matuk, who has only played four games with us, 11 ABs, but he is hitting in those four games. So, <laughs> good to see Mikey Matuk. Hopefully he can keep it up for an extended period of time. And one thing I did notice last time is that our rotation is looking quite rough. Uh, we called up Taylor Williams. He's only pitched five and a third, as you can see. Not not great ratings, but like I said, not great stats, but like I said, he's only pitched five and a third innings for us. Uh, he was only seven and a third in AAA, so it's not like he's gotten really any any extended time at all, really. But there's also Taiwan Walker, who expects to be in the bullpen. He's projected to be a starter. Um, I think I might force him to be in the bullpen and then call up... In AAA here, I was looking last time I noticed that this Penn Murphy guy, also Logan Gilbert though, Logan Gilbert's been pretty solid. He's been really good. So Logan Gilbert and Penn Murphy are both guys who I'm looking at to uh, possibly be someone to call up here soon. As Penn Murphy, FIP is a bit high, don't like to see that ERA is solid though. Good ERA plus, he's been solid through 52 innings. Walking, eh. Not the not the greatest amount of uh, walks per night, but I'll take it. Uh, not a big strikeout guy, but he he does seem to be he's a side armor 80, 80, 88, 90, 90 mile per hour guy. I can't talk right now. Uh, 
and I looked him up last night. He's just a very weird guy. Big Silicon Valley guy, which is, uh, yeesh, but, uh, you know, he can, he can pitch. So, him, Nestor Cortez would be a guy, but he's not pitching well in AAA, so I'm not gonna really do anything with him yet. So really it comes down to Logan Gilbert and Penn Murphy. So what I'm probably going to do is uh, force Taiwan Walker to be... Or what I'm probably going to do is I'm just going to leave him there and hope that if I call somebody up, it, it will immediately put him in the bullpen. So Taylor Williams is just going to immediately go back down to AAA. And we're going to get somebody who can, what am I doing here? We're going to get somebody who can actually pitch in the big league rotation. So I think we're going to go with Logan Gilbert here at a Stetson. He is probably the better, the better prospect of the two, I feel like. Walking less guys. Probably, probably the smarter option to call up Logan Gilbert, even though Penn Murphy is 26 and definitely, he doesn't even expect to be in the big leagues though, so that's the thing about him. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna call up Logan Gilbert here. He's not in the forty man, but that's fine. We'll just promote him; he'll immediately get placed. We have plenty of spots on the forty man roster, and right now it just has him none specified. But hopefully, he is able to. It'll just slot him into that five starter role. And if it doesn't, then I will force Taiwan Walker to be in the pen, and then it should put him either him or Justice Sheffield in the rotation. I would be fine with either of them getting a rotation spot. And those are the notes I had written down. So now let's just uh, let's just sim ahead a day and see what it does with the rotation. And it takes out Kikuchi. All right. Uh, I mean, he's pitching really bad, but all right. Yeah, I'm just gonna go to game strategy and what am I looking at here? Force him into be a reliever. That doesn't like force him to be like a setup guy, does it? Because I would hate that. If it forced him to be... Okay, it doesn't. It puts him longer relief. Okay, good. So Logan Gilbert and Kikuchi are now both in the rotation. Who just pitched this game? Marco Gonzalez. All right. That's all Gucci. All Gucci. Now, what has that done to... Yeah, so now D, D. Gordon is a backup, despite his absurd BABIP carrying him through this uh, early portion of the season. But Shed Long's been hitting well also, and he's more of the future than uh, D. Gordon. So I'm completely fine with Shed Long getting, getting more run at second base than uh, D. Gordon. And let's just take a look at the... Uh, that's right, we also did claim these two relievers where we left off last time. And we're just gonna... Bada bing, bada boom, there we go. They're both claimed. Bradley Roney, Tyler Alexander, both been claimed. And now we have to make a decision. We should be able to... This Bradley Roney guy... Where'd we go? Bradley Roney. I should just be able to put him on the 40-man and then just send him down to AAA. Yeah. Okay, so that uses option. He has plenty of options. Uh, set game strategy. I don't know why I'm doing it on this screen. I could have just enabled AI demotion. Or disabled AI demotion. So he's locked in at AAA. He's going to pitch there. Uh, Tyler Alexander is going to be on the Major League roster, though. We just need to decide once again, who are we going to send down? Kikuchi is a guy who has options, obviously, but, I mean, you, you generally don't want to send down a guy who is getting paid this much money. He obviously has all three options. Maybe it'd kick him into gear be like, hey, buddy, figure things out. But, I mean, you know. Also, he's my scout really does not like him. Which is not ideal. He's probably going to be a bad contract for us. Taiwan Walker is another guy who could, who we could send. I feel like, possibly. Yeah, he has options. Taiwan Walker is a guy we could send down. I feel like he's probably going to be much better in the pen than he was as a starter, though, because he does have really good pitchers. Doesn't really strike out too many guys, though. That's kind of dis disappointing. I thought he struck out more guys, but I guess not. Uh, we could send down somebody here, possibly. Not really, though. Nobody's there to send down. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to do with Kikuchi. Kikuchi is going to get himself a, uh... Going to get himself a wake-up call. He's going down to AAA. We're going to leave him down for a little bit. We're not just going to forget about him while he's down there. Once again, do the thing where we lock him in. We don't want him playing in, like, double A or something. 
We wanted to get him to, we want him to figure his shit out while he's in AAA, not not have the AI send him down to like A ball or something because his ratings aren't what they because the scout thinks he's a forty five overall and the 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 AI thinks that he should be playing in like double A or something because of that. So now we can go back to here, waivers DFA, Tyler Alexander is back or now on the team, another lefty in the pen, big control guy, solid change up. Figured he was worth a shot, twenty five year old, why not? Why not give him a ride? And uh, now we can uh, go back to here once again. I'm just... Uh, e see, every time I see a reliever who's like, Oh, this guy could be decent. I just feel like clamming him. But we already had this situation where uh, every time I look at a reliever, we have to, like, crunch at who I want to send down and who I want to keep up as we beat the Miami Marlins 4-2. to two. Now let's keep things cruising along here. As we are keeping an eye on the waiver wire... Nobody interesting popping up. We just beat the Toronto Blue Jays 9 to 3. <clears throat> Once I sim a couple more days here, I do want to take a look at just like the state of the roster. Look at that four game home run streak for Daniel Vogelbach after I put him in that uh, DH spot. That's what you like to see. You love to see that type of stuff, even though we did lose. It's not our goal to win this season, anyways. We beat the A's. Look at that. I'm not the A's. The uh, the uh, Angels. And then we lose back to back. Oh, great. Tyler Alexander. What did Austin Nola do? He's four day. That's fine. Uh, yeah, shoulder inflammation. That's two weeks. Uh, it's a it's a day to day thing, but you definitely don't want him pitching through that. So we are just gonna slap him on the IL, and that means Kikuchi is probably just gonna come right back up. As, yeah, it looks like uh, some of our picks, the Greek-Canadian guy signed, our first-round pick, Patrick Bailey signed, Reed Detmer signed, and uh, G. Allen has also signed uh, with, uh, who is Elliot? Tim Elliot is one of our guys on our, that's not good, Taurus Fletcher attended, he's one of the guys on our prospect list, prospect short list, so his, his news will pop up on the Your Team Only, because it's also guys who are on your see, news involving shortlisted players. I have that checked. So, uh, yeah. So basically now Kikuchi's probably just going to come right back up, unless I decide to call up that Penn Murphy guy. He's pitched two games, 12 innings, 12 Ks. I mean, he's obviously too good for AAA. He, he literally just pitched, though. He's probably pissed because we said no. He's pissed at his performance. He's fine with being in AAA, I think. <laughs> but uh, at least for now. But uh, he's pissed with his performance more than he's pissed with anything else. Zach Grant's still pitching well. Austin Adams. Uh, I mean, what are you doing, man? You're on rehab down here, and you're doing this. You're striking out a ton of people, but I mean, you're 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 also walking a ton of people. I mean, what's what's the deal with that? What's the deal? Iriano pitching like shit in AAA. It's just, you know, you love to see that type of stuff. You love to send down a guy because he's pitching like shit in the bigs and then he's doing nothing. But am I looking at the right guy? Oh, no. I was looking at his, uh, his MLB numbers. I'm not saying. He's, he's actually pitching well in AAA. Very limited numbers, but still. Zach Gratz is on fire. He's the guy we were looking at that first time. Uh, I feel like he would be an obvious call-up. We're just gonna... I don't know. That's right, Tyler Clippard's on rehab. He's gotten plenty of innings in AAA, we're just gonna call him back up. Uh, Austin Adams has only gotten four innings, and he's not pitching well in his rehab starts. There's rehab games, so we're just gonna let him continue to be down there. While uh, we sim a couple more days here, once I get to like the end of June, I want to just take a look at what our the status of our players are looking like, and see who we could possibly maybe trade at the deadline. Once we get more into the later portion of July, I do want to make sure I take a look at the waiver wire as I'm advancing day by day. Though Matt Joyce on waivers is he just constantly on waivers? It feels like he's been on waivers for like two weeks now. Trevor Cahill, no as we're just losing games here. But once again, we're not trying to win here. We did just beat Kansas City, 6-1. to one. Why is Keon Broxton on fire? He's on fire? Why? 
Where where are the splits? Okay. He's had back to back he's had a week of good hitting, so he's on a fire. Not that we need Keon Broxton. Reed Detmers, the guy we just drafted, has now been hurt. Fantastic. Shoulder inflammation, done for the season and high A ball. Ah, just beautiful. You love the you love to see that type of stuff. You really do. You just love it when you draft the guy a pitcher and he immediately gets hurt. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kinda looking at Cal Caleb Cowart here. Caleb Cowart. Caleb Cowart. However you say his name. Thing as I don't really need a uh infielder. Like Dylan Moore is our utility guy. He's not doing anything, but it's like he's a bench guy. Look at this, Kyle Lewis is on fire. See, I knew it. We just needed to give him some more time, and he was going to figure things out. Kyle Lewis is on a hot streak now, playing center field for us. Uh, Mitch Hanniger also on fire, starting to pick things up. Got his R WRC Plus up to 134. Solid slash line, got seven bombs on the air. Three stolen bases, hasn't been caught. You'll love to see that type of stuff. Kyle Seeger is very unhappy with his performance and the team record. I mean, I feel like if you've played in Seattle for this long, you should just be like, you know, if, if they're losing, you should just be like, ah, yeah, another season of this. Who really cares? Patrick Wisdom, though. I mean, yeesh. It's time. You're just gonna... I'm just gonna, like, DFA him, because he's... He's not somebody we particularly need to keep in the system, so I'm just gonna, like, DFA him. And then we'll decide once he- if he clears waivers, what to, uh, do with him. But, uh, it's Evan White time, boys. June 25th, Evan White time. It's time. He's- he's tearing the cover off the ball in AAA. Evan White... Time. Bada bing, baby. Up in the big leagues, Evan White. That time. How's Fila doing in left? He's got it to 35. I guess that's okay. Uh, what's Matuk doing? Matuk, Matuk, Matuk. He's still, he's still hitting well. We're just going to keep running with Matuk in left field because he's still doing the damn thing. As we just beat Texas 12 to 5, what happened in this game? Vogelbach went 3 for 5. Wisdom actually hit a homer in that game as we DFA'd him. He's probably, you know, he's punching air right now. He's like, what the hell, man? Hit a home run and then they dfa me? But yeah, Hanniger looks like he, uh, he was magical to play. Went 5 for 5. I'm putting so much thought into just, like, random waiver wire guys who aren't going to be anything other than just, like, orga organizational filler. But uh, you never know. Sometimes you can get some production out of guys. I've definitely gotten production out of guys who are just, you know, you're not really sure if they're going to do anything, but they end up doing stuff. Uh, we got Jared Collect. We should probably check on how he's doing in double A, shouldn't we? He's day to day with a sprained knee. Absolutely tearing the cover off the ball in double A. Look at that. Just absolutely destroying the ball. I think that means he needs to be uh, called up here. We're going to send. Because he, he spent, like, ha a little bit of time in AA last year, so he's had a year to go through A and AA, and now his time combined between last year and this year in AA. We're going to call him up. He's got the ratings to definitely play in AAA. So uh, Jared Kalenic is now in AAA, and it's only a matter of time until we've got our uh, our just solid outfielder, outfield of now of, uh, like, Kyle Lewis, Jared Kalenic, and Mitch Hanniger. From left to right, probably. But uh, Mitch Hanniger's probably... I don't know. We'll have, to, we'll have to assess what the situation with him is. But Kalenic, he is now in AAA for us. As I just was reminded to check on him. I did want to look at uh, AA actually a bit more. We'll do that once we get to the end of... Also just notice that expiring personnel. We'll look at that at the end of uh, July as well. As we just beat Tampa Bay, make sure we want to pull up the waiver wire. All players, yes. Is that Carson Fulmer? Huh. Huh. Hasn't gotten too much time in the majors this year, that is, really in general. He's, I know he's been hurt a lot in real life, hasn't he? 
don't know, I feel like Carson's former could be a guy we claim and give a shot, you know? He's he's kind of fizzled out in the White Sox organization. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. Claim Carson Fulmer, see what he can do. At the very least, he's a bullpen guy. At the very worst, we just, we just DFA him and get rid of him. No real downside to slapping a claim on him. We just went back-to-back -back games, and now we got to decide what to do with Patrick Wisdom who we are just going to throw down on AAA, and they're just going to do whatever with him. They're probably going to leave him AAA, but we're not going to, like, guarantee that he stays there. He's just going to, you know, do his thing. We're going to let the AI take over with Patrick Wisdom. Oh, okay, that was the thing I got. Uh, Austin Adams. So Austin, a okay, this is, it always puts me on that screen when it is the rehab. Uh, who is... When did we get him? Did Washington release? Okay, so this is the thing, is that the AI, since I have them on sign and release players, is sometimes they'll sign veteran guys and, like, stash them on your AAA roster. So I did notice that he was on waivers early in the season, and now he's my uh, one of my AAA catchers, apparently. Who did they send down? Yeah, they sent down Brian O'Keefe. Who uh, was not... Yeah, I'm fine with that. Who cares? Whatever. Wellington Castillo is now in AAA. So this is what we're looking here for. Austin Adams, his rehab assignment is over. Still was walking way too many guys. But, I mean, we're, we got to call him back up. So Austin Adams, we got to find a spot for him on the Major League roster. Uh, Clippard's still pitching well for us. Taiwan Walker it has improved his ERA quite a bit since being put in the bullpen. Kendall Graveman's been dropped into the bullpen as Eric Swanson. What the... It made some adjustments. So Gonzalez, Margavicious, Gilbert through four starts has been okay. We're just going to keep running to him in the rotation. Uh, Justice Sheffield has made two starts. Very good to see that he's been pitching well. And they put Eric Swanson in the rotation. I mean, I guess. I don't mind that. He's okay. Kendall Graveman is a guy who we have... Is he an option? Yeah, he does. He's an opt-out, but I have to... Okay, yeah, it's, it's a $0 buyout, so I'll probably opt out of that because I don't want to be paying that guy $3 million next year. Not really a $3 million type pitcher, I don't, I don't believe. This is going to be... Uh, this is going to be interesting at who we send down here. Because I don't particularly want to send down any of these guys. We're gonna we're gonna do it. We're gonna send down Brian Shaw. The the guy is getting paid a lot of money, but he's he's by far our worst reliever right now. Uh, next year's a buyout. We're probably gonna buy him out because we don't want nine million dollar Brian Shaw on the team next year. He's not pitching well enough to stay in the big leagues. We have a better option available right now. So uh, Brian Shaw, you're getting nine million dollars to go play in Tacoma. We are gonna make sure that you stay in Tacoma. And Austin Adams is going to come up to the big leagues. So, uh, now we are going to checkmark our way into July. As Tyler Alexander, Tyler Alexander is not eligible, we're going to rehab him. Just because I like to rehab anybody who comes back from injury. Because uh, I just have a really bad history of even if they're even if they're coming back from like a mild injury, I tend to send them on rehab assignments because I just feel like anytime I put them right back in the major leagues, they end up being like really shitty, or they just you know they end up getting hurt right away again. As our claim for Carson Fulmer's went through, and now we have to decide who to send down again. All right, so I think what we're gonna do is I don't really have anybody who I want to send down right now, and I definitely don't want to send down somebody who's been pitching decently well this season and could possibly get us like a prospect package at the deadline. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trade Kendall Graveman now. Bit early for a trade. It's June. We're about to head into July, but I mean, it's not no no not out of the ordinary. Trades happen all the time. And, uh, yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to shop Kendall Graveman around for prospects. And I'm just going to see at first what the best prospects available that uh, they would offer me are going to be. So nobody. All right. Uh, maybe we won't trade Kendall Graveman right now. Now he's probably pissed. 
No, he's just unhappy. He's still good morale. Yeah, so you see here, I'm looking at the as starter and as reliever substitution line for uh, Mr. Taiwan Walker here, and it is night and day how much better he's been as a reliever compared to a starter. So I'm going to keep him in the bullpen. I don't want to send him down. All right, so I don't know who I want to send down. We have nobody we can send down, essentially, so I'm literally just going to put him on my 40-man, which I just did, and we are going to put him on waivers again and see if he cl uh, clears, and then we're going to send him down to AAA. So uh, that's that's the move with Carson Fulmer. Nestor Cortez, look at him, look at him, putting things together here in the month of June. Very good to see. That's definitely went up quite a bit. But yeah, Nestor Cortez is on fire. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. We love to see that type of stuff. Nestor Cortez, my man from the Yankees. So once again, we got some AAA pitchers who could possibly get called up. I believe Kikuchi's pitching on AAA, and it just we have we have a lot of pitchers all around the same skill level who I would like to be able to get uh, some decent innings out of. You know. But yeah, now that it's July, I do want to take a look at what our roster looks like. So with our pitching, the the rotation's looking pretty pretty okay, to be honest. Marco Gonzalez has been struggling a bit this year, but uh, I'm hoping he's going to turn things around more in the second half of the year. Marga Vicious has been quite solid, actually. Decent ERA+, plus, under 4 ERA, a little above 4 FIP. Uh, not a strikeout guy, obviously, but he's not walking like anybody. I mean, I'll take that from, from Marga Vicious. Definitely take that. Logan Gilbert's gotten four starts in the bigs. He's been fine. Uh, he's a 23-year-old. He's a prospect for us. We want to see what he can do, and he's been he's been pretty solid. Uh, Justice Sheffield has gotten two starts. He was fine in the bullpen, too. That's definitely good to see. Eric Swanson has been... He was only gotten one to start. He's about to start again. Uh, he... Was fine in the bullpen, though. He's got some decent ratings, so that is good to see. Uh, Austin Adams has only pitched two innings, but he hasn't given up. He's pitched two innings, gotten two saves, hasn't given up a run since coming up, despite being meh in AAA. So uh, no idea how that really works, but we'll take it. Uh, Gullibu, Gull Gillibu? G Gilbo? Gilbo? Gulbo? I don't know how to pronounce this guy's name. I honestly don't even know who he is. Uh, I'm sure there's Mariners fans who are going to be watching this be like, How do you not know? I don't know, man. I didn't watch baseball much this year, and uh, I definitely don't watch Mariners baseball. So uh, He's been solid, though. Definitely like to see that as our lone lefty in the pen right now. Uh, Altavia, former uh, Cardinal, if I'm not mistaken. Former Cardinal prospect, I want to say. Maybe not. Maybe I'm thinking of somebody else. I think I'm thinking of... Uh, yeah, I'm definitely thinking of somebody else. This is uh, this is the ripped guy that they call on into the bullpen. But he's been very good. Extremely good. 281 ERA plus is very good. Very good K per nine. Not walking a lot of guys either. Very good to see from Dan Altavia. Uh, Matt McGill's been fine. Tyler Clipper's been great since we claimed him. Wendelkin's been great since we claimed him. Graveman's been fine. Iwan Walker's been solid in the pen since we put him there. Uh, in the lineups, it's part of the uh, the team. We've got uh, what am I looking for? We we got Austin Nola, who's been quite solid as a catcher. One three three WRC plus two point three WAR already as a catcher. He's hitting very well. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna end up trading him like they did in real life. I'm probably gonna keep him around just because he's so cheap and. Uh, like, he's definitely going to want more at the end of the year in arbitration, obviously, but he's so cheap, and, like, he still has so much team control that I, I really don't want to trade him. So we're probably going to keep him around. Vogelbach, same thing. I mean, they didn't trade him in real life. Didn't they, like, DFA him because he was really bad? Well, he has not been really bad for us. He's got 15 home runs heading into July. Uh, WRC Plus, not the greatest, but that's fine. We'll take that. Uh, what else are we looking for here? Shed Long's been very solid. At second base for us, uh, Daniel, what am I saying? Evan White, since being called up, he's only played five games, 20 ABs, but he's been very good in those 20 ABs. He was tearing the cover off the ball in AAA, so it's good to see that it's uh, it's continued here in the big leagues so far in his career. Uh, Dylan Moore has been bad as a utility guy backup, but, I mean, he's a utility guy backup. What can you expect? D. Gordon has been very solid. He's starting to come back down to life because he's not playing every day anymore, but uh, it's still very solid for D. Gordon. 
Kyle Seeger has been pretty bad. He's starting to turn things around a bit, but he's still not not the greatest. Uh, J.P. Crawford, definitely. I'll take those numbers at 105 WRC+. Plus. I'll take that from, uh, from uh, J.P. Crawford. The stolen bases, definitely uh, stop stealing bases if you have a 33% steal rate. Stop doing that, J.P. Crawford. Uh, Tim Lotz has been solid as a bench outfielder. Mikey Motzhook, since we claimed him, has actually been really good. 88 AB, slashing 309, 352, 469. Babip's not absurd either. I mean, that's that's very good. I'll take that. Walking, not as much as I would like to see. Striking out a bit, eh, not, not like too, too much, but I mean, definitely not striking out a, a, like a low amount, but still very good for Mikey Mata because we've claimed him. Mitch Hanniger's still on fire. He's just getting torched up now. He's hitting very, very well. Uh, Kyle Lewis starting to uh, be on a cold streak here, but still he's a young guy. He's our he's an outfielder of the future for us. We're going to keep him out there getting playing every day. He's doing his thing. So yeah, I'm I'm fairly happy with how things are doing. Oh yeah, Tom Murphy, what's he up to? Uh, he's been playing like shit as the backup catcher. He wants to start. He's angry. Uh, just, you know, not, not ideal from Tom Murphy there. He's gotten overrun or overtaken by Austin Nola. But, uh, yeah, so not, not too many complaints here from our roster. Let's go check on how, uh, Kikuchi is. Kikuchi has been very good in AAA, so I do want to get him back up here in the big leagues sometime soon. We just saw Nestor Cortez one uh, player of the month in AAA. So he's a guy who we could call up soon. Justin Dunn is pitching decently well. He's definitely a guy who we want to get involved in our long-term plans. Penn Murphy is still pitching very well. He's another guy who's pitching his, his way into our plans. Uh, Zach Grotz is a reliever who's been very good for us. Iriano, is, uh, he's been solid in AAA. Johan Ramirez is striking out just a buttload of guys. I mean, look at a 16K per nine. He's walking way too many guys, but I mean, that, that K per nine is so enticing, and his stuff is just so freaking nasty. I mean, you you got to see what you can do with a guy like that. Brandon Brennan has been pretty... Uh, he's been okay in uh, AAA. Art Warren is now the closer in AAA. He's been pretty solid. He's a guy who you want to get involved in our long-term plans as well. The thing is, like I said, we just have so many guys in the big leagues that we are that we like don't want to like. I don't know who I would send down out of this pack right here. I mean, I guess one of the prospects, like Gilbert or something, but I mean, I don't want to send him down as the thing. So it's just like I don't know what I would do. And then it's not looking like Clippard or Graveman are going to get us pieces at the deadline. Probably not even Taiwan Walker. So I'm not really sure. Because I shopped them around when I was looking at who I was going to send down for Fulmer, and they didn't really get anything. They didn't get they didn't get any offers, and that's usually I did bump up the trade difficulty a bit. Where is that even listed? Is that yeah here? I put that on hard. Usually it's on uh, average. I put it on hard just to bump it up a bit. So maybe that's why they didn't get any offers. But I don't know. I figured a reliever who's been very very good would get at least some sort of like offer, but I guess not. But uh, yeah, let's just keep things chugging along here. I do want to get a decent chunk of progress here, at least get up to the deadline and see what's going. We just won eight in a row? What? We won eight in a row and we lost to Boston to end it. I mean, Jesus. I mean, I don't even look at these because, like, why would I trade Kalenic and Jake Fraley for Freddie Galvis? Like, no? Why would I do that? Stop. No. Don't, 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 don't even insult me. So I, I turn it off to where it doesn't even stop the sim. Because it's just like, why would I want to look at that? Marwin Gonzalez, what? He's been really bad, and he's getting paid a lot, no thanks. Joel Lugo, infielder, he can't hit. He's, yeah, he's not anybody to look at. Uh, Matt Hall. Uh, I mean, he's been okay out of the, he's been pretty good, actually, out of the pen. For only three games, but I mean, eh, eh. Not really worth slapping a claim on Matt Hall. Jeffrey Spring, same sort of deal. That's Fulmer trying to clear waivers for us to get into uh, the minors. And it looks like he just cleared. Brett Gardner, they waved... They waved Gardy! That looks nothing like Brett Gardner. You're going to tell me that's Gardner. One, he has hair. Two, 
That's not Brett Gardner. What? What is that? What is that? That's... <laughs> that ain't... Brett Gardner's like the, the most like easily spotted dude. He just looks like he's... No, everybody knows what Brett Gardner looks like, and that is not Brett Gardner. <laughs> Alright, so it looks like Fulmer just cleared, so we should be able to... We can! Carson Fulmer is now in AAA. And I'm going to disable the AI demotion so he stays in AAA. And let's go back to looking at the waiver wire screen here. I'm not going to claim Brett Gardner, just even though he is having a decent season. They probably just waved him to make room on the roster, but I'm not going to do... Also, International Amateur has just opened up. Now, we are a small market team, and we're not going to be able to go and... Uh, what am I saying? To go and just uh, spend money willy-nilly in the international free agents every year because we don't have that type of money as the Seattle Mariners, but it would be something that we should look into. Like this guy, he's not asking for the most amount of money. He could possibly be somebody. Now all these guys are just like, you're taking like a real long shot on these guys because they're like 17 years old. This guy is Cuban, looking pretty solid as a hitter. Uh, like, there's this guy, too, switch-hitting outfielder. Probably not going to be much, though. So, like, yeah, this this Yiddy Cape guy is definitely... Yeah, he's... He's the one we're, we're, we're going to try to go after here. So, yeah, see, look. We don't have much money for an international free agent budget. Our budget is... is is two million essentially two million five hundred this guy just wants a little bit uh more than no wait what am i saying yeah so i mean it, it, we're we have no money left essentially if we sign this guy uh i mean i'll ask him for a response he's probably going to get a better offer and then we won't be able to top it and that's the that's why i tend not to go after international amateurs when I'm playing as a small market team, because it's just anybody worth going after is not uh, is is going to want a lot of money, and I just never have that type of money to go offer people as a small market team. We just lose to the Phillies. Like, see where Austin Nola got hurt. What the? Oh, he's not serious. He returns immediately. Like, international amateurs, he favors the offer, but, I mean, he's probably going to get a better one in, like, a day. So, you look, now he wants more money. He got an offer from Colorado. They offered him $3 million. If I go here, we can't even offer him that because we'd be a million over budget. Like, I could offer him that, I think. I think. Yeah, no, the owner does not even approve. So, I can't even offer him that. So, it's just, like, what am I supposed to do? So then I go here. I withdraw that offer. Now I can, not free agents, international amateur free agents. Already, like, half of the, the dudes have signed. There's only, like, a few left. And uh, they all want a decent chunk of change. And it's like, anybody who who I could afford is only going to be a 20 potential. And, like, they're just a really long shot to be anything. Like, what's, what's even the point of offering this guy, like, $900,000? Because it's such a long shot that he could be that. And it's just, it'll, it'll sign, like, undrafted free agents, too. And it's just, like, I mean, there's no point in offering any of these guys with the amount of money that I can, that I can uh, actually cough up as a small market team. It's just, it, it's the struggles of being a small market team. So you got to be creative with how you get your assets, which makes it fun, but also kind of annoying. Definitely don't want Trevor Cahill either. Robbie Grossman, he's an interesting piece. Switch hitter, he's still under team control. Yeah, he's still under team control. Oh, possible free agency. Or, so it depends on how much more time he gets in the big leagues, is the thing. But I mean, he's a guy who gets on base a lot. And I love those type of guys. He's getting paid a decent amount of money, though. And like I said, I mean, we are making a run here. Like, where are we in the standings? Yeah, we're we're not... I mean, we're not far out of the wild card. See, we, we could... But, I mean, we're not going to go making a trade. But, I mean, we're also not going to be getting a top pick. So, like, I could claim him and then send down, like, even though Tim Lopes has been good, 
he's not, you know, he's not like the best backup. I could claim Robbie Grossman. That could be, I'm going to do that. I'm going to claim Robbie Grossman as this guy signs with the Yankees, of course. See, that's, that's why I don't go after those guys is because I can't afford them. I can't afford guys that the Yankees are going to be bidding on. Carried along. So when it, when it if this claim goes through, what I'm going to do is uh, send down Lopes and have Grossman as like the backup outfielder. It, it might actually start him over Matuk, which I mean I'm fine with. It'll just be in Matuk's the fourth outfielder and Grossman starts, but I'm fine with whatever the game decides to do at that left field spot as we just lose to Oakland by one run and lose to Oakland by one run again. And the All-Star teams have been announced. Do we have any rosters, anybody on the All-Star team? Kendall Graveman made the All-Star team. Really? Really? Kendall Graveman is our All-Star? Is he, like, our only All-Star? Austin Nola made it. So... So Austin Nola just could have been our only All-Star, and that would have been fine, but, I mean, Kendall Graveman? Like, he, I mean, he hasn't been that good. He's fine, I guess. But, I mean, All-Star? Really? Kendall Graveman? Okay. What about Prospects? Who made it for the Prospect game? We got uh, Wyatt Mills. A guy who's not even pitching well in AA. I mean, why? Why is this guy on the All-Star? He's on the, the Futures game. He's 25-year-old reliever who's getting shelled in AA. See, I tend not to look at this because it's just... It never makes any sense to me, like, who makes the team. Like, this guy, I mean, he's fine. He's making the team. Sure. Why not? But then you got other guys, like this Wyatt Mills guy. Like, why is he on the team? Anybody else from Seattle? Jared Kalenic, of course. Tearing the cover off the ball. Or not tearing the cover off the ball, but he's hitting very well in AAA so far. Since I called him up there. Uh, Julio Rodriguez, who's another one of our top prospects, playing for the Modesto Nuts currently. And uh, he's hitting quite well. I think we're going to call him up, actually. I think we're going to... Uh, I feel like we could. I don't want to, like, rush him, though. I don't want to rush him to be in double A because he is only 19. I think I'll leave him in Modesto for... Uh, mm. What is our double A roster looking like? Double A outfielders. So yeah, it's Dom Thompson Williams who you want getting time. This guy who I mean, I guess he could be getting time, but I mean he's not like a top top prospect. And then uh, Jack Larson who is a 25 year old in Double A. So I mean, yeah, he could definitely get some time in Double A. I think I want to do it though. I think I want to call him up. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. We're gonna call him up to Double uh, A. Julio Rodriguez, 19 years old. In, uh, in double-A. I didn't mean to do that. Julio Rodriguez, now part of the Arkansas Travelers. I believe he's actually just recently got announced to be on the cover of, like, Baseball Prospectus or something, like, one of those magazines. That's, that's cool. Julio Rodriguez, he's in my system. We'll see what he does for us. Aloy Jimenez wins the home run challenge, and Robbie Grossman has been claimed. All right, so Tim Lopes goes down to AAA. We are going to lock him to AAA. They'll probably just send down, like, one of Marte, Calgill, or Murphy, or this Perez guy. Because, like, who cares? I mean, this guy was an indie ball this year. Why did they... They just bought him on their own? Uh, what am I going to? Oh, yeah, waivers DFA, Robbie Grossman, now on the team. Bada-bing, bada-boom, baby! For example, Tyler Matzik on waivers. Extremely filthy stuff. Lefty could come out of the pen for us. Obviously a former starter in real life, now a reliever. Just nasty stuff. Absolutely lit things up in AAA. I don't want to say lit things up, but I mean, he was striking out dudes at just an absurd rate in AAA. Uh, he pitched two-thirds of an inning in the bigs, and then they were like, hey, we're, we're going we're gonna to wave you. Because I want Matzik. We have a we have a lack of bullpen lefties, and he fills that need, man. That's what we need, man. 
I'm doing it. I'm doing it. We're just going to roll the dice. We're going to see what happens, and we're going to deal with it if the claim goes through. Mitch Hanniger breaks his thumb. Wonderful. Fractured thumb, Mitch Hanniger. Uh, he was tearing things up, and now he's on the IL. Wonderful. All right. Well, good thing we claimed Robbie Grossman, who can play right field, not the best right fielder. Kyle Lewis is probably the best right fielder we have as an option right now. Like, Matuk will... He's starting to struggle, Matuk, which is not ideal. But, I mean, it's not to be not expected, because we expected that to happen. Hellenic. I mean, he's tearing the ball. He's tearing the cover off the ball in AAA, folks. I mean, do I want to call up Jared Kalenic? It could be an option. He expects to be playing in the major leagues. Playing in Major's expectation, he's got the ratings. Uh, I would like to see the contact improve a bit more before I call him up because you don't want to stunt that. But also you don't want him to get like bored of a level and like not and then stunt that because he's not like playing against high enough competition. But you also don't want to call him up too soon. But I mean, he's... He is... Mm, he is just dominating these levels, man. I mean, he's barely played in AAA, but I mean... ah. I generally don't call up guys this fast, but I, th I think it's the move, man. He's playing in right field, but we, we're probably going to play him in center. I, it's the move. It's the move. Jared Kalenic, you're coming up. Uh, what are we doing? Set position, center field. We want Kyle Lewis to play some right. And uh, bada bing, bada boom. That's, that's what our outfield's going to be looking like now, man. Once again, now we're back at the thing where who do we want to send down to get another lefty in the, in the bullpen? Because we have too many, we have a bunch of lefties in the rotation, but we don't have many lefties in the pen. And that is our issue. Oh, it is July 21st, so we could try to trade somebody here. Uh, Brian Shaw is in AAA. Uh, he's not going to be getting traded. He's dominating a AAA. I mean, he's, he's barely pitched, but he's not going to get traded because he's in AAA. Uh, Robbie Grossman, he's going to go to free agency because he's played with us just even one game, apparently. Uh, but he's probably not somebody we can trade because we just picked him up on waivers. Uh, Tyler Clippard is a guy I would like to trade. Taiwan Walker, also a guy I would like to trade. Kendall Graven, possibly. But the thing is, it's just like... See, look, if I shop player around, if I look for prospects... Last time I did this, nothing popped up. And that's, yeah, see, nothing popped up. If I do this, does anything pop up here? Nothing pops up for all players, just anything. Literally anybody who could possibly trade me. Nothing pops up. Taiwan Walker, shop player around. I prefer prospects. Please give me something. There we go. There's something. Just the Blue Jays. The Blue Jays are the only team in baseball that want Taiwan Walker, and they're offering me this outfielder who's actually putting up a decent season between high A and double A. Pretty solid season, to be honest. Probably not going to improve too much. He's going to be like a slightly below average bat, can play all three outfield positions. More of a corner outfielder, though. Switch hitter. And that's the thing, though, is these these pro these guys that I'm trying to trade, they're not going to get any big time prospects back. So, like, I could get this Chavez Young guy as like the main piece in the deal, and then see if they would also want to give me uh, Joey Murray here because they want to get rid of him. They don't like him. He's probably he's ineligible actually for the Rule Five Draft. Uh, soft tossing lefty, not. Ideally, who I would want in that trade. Christopher Beck, also not what I would want in that trade. Uh, TJ Zuch, Zook, however you say this guy's name. He's pitching well in double A. Uh, maybe. He's not the greatest, though. He's not going to get any better, either. That's the thing, is none of these guys are going to get, like, a huge return. So it's like, I'm just trying to find, like, organizational filler as well as guys who could possibly play some sort of role. Like, this Chavez Young guy is probably our best option. So, like, maybe... Huh. 
Yeah, so like maybe if I say Chavez Young and then this Joey Murray guy who's currently playing in high A. Uh, if I say trade for Joey Young, sort by prospects, Joey Murray. Is he going to be on this list? Hopefully. I probably already scrolled past him because I'm a dumbass, but... No, here he is, Joey Murray. Do they like that still? Good, they like that deal still. That's the thing, is sometimes if they have two guys and you just trade for one of them, you can slap on another one, and since they're willing to trade him, they will also trade that guy. And now I'm probably not going to be able to, like, throw in any of these guys. Sometimes you can, like, get a reliever from them, because they just don't view relievers highly. Jackson Reese, fly ball pitcher. He could be some. He's already 25, though. They like that. They like that. He isn't eligible for the Rule 5 draft, so you do like to see that. Uh, What else could we do? Who does Kirby Sneed guy? He's a lefty. Pitching in high A, just absolutely dominating in high A. Uh, Kirby Sneed. I mean, we could throw him on. They do like that. They do like that a lot indeed. Maybe, yeah. No, we're not going to get anything better than that. We're already kind of pushing it with this Taiwan Walker deal. So I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to do this. We're going to trade Taiwan Walker for that prospect package. And then we're going to take this Chavez Young guy. We are going to... Put him in double A where he was. We're also going to... Where are we going? Disable AI Demotion. And we're going to add him to the Prospects page. Uh, Joey Murray. This guy was in double A and high A. Uh, I want him in double A. We want to disable the Demotion. And add him to the Prospects list. Jackson Reese. This is a guy who probably should be in double A. Definitely should be in double A. I feel like. Maybe. Uh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna put him in double A. He's 25. I mean he should not be in, in A ball. We're gonna make sure he stays in A. We're gonna add him to the kids list. And then Kirby Sneed, he was the guy who was absolutely filthy in high A. Definitely should be in double A. And definitely should be staying there, and definitely should be added to the kids list. Alright, so now we've opened up a spot in the Major League bullpen. And that means we can take Tyler Matzik and add him to the bullpen. So bada bang, bada boom. There we go. We did it. Opened up a spot, made a trade, got some prospects, some controllable assets to our team. As what? How did that happen? We won 15 to 7 in 14 innings. We had a 9 run 14th inning. Imagine that. Imagine playing that game. Imagine being a fan watching that game. You know, it was in. Oh, okay, it was in Baltimore. Imagine if it was like you're a Baltimore fan watching a game that's in Seattle. Probably started like 11 o'clock at night, 10 30 at night, because, you know, that's what they do at those games. And uh, you stay up till watching the fourteenth inning. It's like two in the morning, and <laughs> your team gives up a nine-run fourteenth inning. I mean, oh my god! We just Kyle Lewis homered. Evan White had two doubles. Nola double. Kyle Lewis had a double. Dylan Moore even had a double. Justice Sheffield kind of got shelled in his start. Got pushed around a bit. Wendell Kinn was okay. Clippard, Adams, Gullaboo, or G Gilbo, Gilbo. Al Altavia got the win. Kendall Graven pitched a half of an inning. Who blew up? It was Paul Fry. He gave up all nine of the runs. <laughs> they left him in to give up all nine. He walked seven guys. Jesus. I, I mean, it, oh my God, dude. And we beat Toronto. Carl Edwards Jr. is back. All right, so we're going to put him on a rehab assignment because that's what we do with everybody who's coming back from injury. Uh, mail, news, six-game suspensions for... Well, geez, what'd you do? Bench-clearing brawl, and you fought Jose Martinez, a 21-year-old starting pitcher for the Dodgers organization. 
I believe that's what the Tulsa Drillers are for. Yeah, it is. Dodgers organization. Uh, yeah, I mean, geez. How's he doing? He's he's hitting well in in, uh, in, in double-A so far, so that's good to see. Slugging's a bit low, but you would like to see that come up a bit, but... He's, 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 he's feeling at home in double-A. He's fighting people, and he's, he's ripping the ball. As we just went back-to-back -back against Toronto... And we lose. All right, so it's July 27th now. Red Hot Young. Chavez Young, look at that. Wins Player of the Week. I mean, look at that. Plays five games with us, and he is just absolutely tearing the cover off the ball in double A. I, Jesus. Very good to see that we trade for a guy, and he immediately starts doing that. Mm -hmm.